Welcome to Infection Prevention and Control, or IPAC, Fundamentals for People Receiving Care and Their Families, Caregivers, and Visitors. This training provides basic infection prevention and control information that can help protect you and others from the health risks of getting an infection. This presentation is for people who receive services in healthcare, congregate living, or social service settings, as well as for their families, friends, and caregivers. These settings can include hospitals, long-term care, retirement homes, home and community care, group homes, and shelters, among others. The objectives of this presentation are to understand basic infection prevention and control, or IPAC, practices that will protect you and others from the spread of infections, including COVID-19. To understand why care providers and staff do certain things when providing care to patients, residents, or clients, and how to assist them. IPAC are practices or things that we do to prevent or reduce the risk of spreading infections or harmful germs from person to person. This is why we perform the same practices all the time and with every person that is being cared for. We know that these practices work and can help keep you and others safe and healthy. These practices include hand hygiene or cleaning hands, personal protective equipment, screening, immunization, physical distancing, safe visiting. When you are receiving care or visiting someone who is, it is important to follow all required IPAC practices. Sometimes a person can spread germs to others even when they don't feel or look sick. By following practices at all times, we keep everyone safe. Each setting may have slightly different policies, so it is important to check with the staff about what is being done and what you need to do. Ask questions if you don't understand. Let's talk about hand hygiene or cleaning hands in more detail. Hand hygiene is a term used in healthcare that means keeping hands clean and healthy, but this practice is important for everyone, no matter their role or setting. Cleaning our hands keeps us safe from infections and prevents us from spreading germs to others. Gloves are not used instead of cleaning hands. This means you still have to clean your hands before and after wearing gloves. Always use the products provided by a facility, such as hand sanitizer or alcohol-based hand rub or soap. Bar soap is only for personal use at home by the people who live there and not for care providers. Use available moisturizers to keep the skin on your hands healthy. Certain personal and care activities require hand hygiene because there is a risk that our hands could become contaminated during these tasks. First, we will talk about personal activities or tasks. These can include before entering and when leaving the building, whenever hands are visibly soiled or dirty, before eating or before preparing food, after using the washroom or blowing your nose. When we provide care to another person, it is important to clean hands before and afterwards. Also, certain activities such as putting on and removing personal protective equipment or PPE mean we have to clean our hands. Clean hands before entering and when exiting the bed space or room. If our hands come into contact with body fluids, such as blood, vomit, or feces, then we also need to clean our hands. This slide provides a visual step-by-step -step of how to clean your hands using hand sanitizer, which is also referred to as alcohol-based hand rub, or ABHR. First, apply one to two pumps of product to palms of dry hands. Two, rub hands together palm to palm. Three, rub in between and around fingers. 
4. Rub back of each hand with the palm of the opposite hand. 5. Rub fingertips of each hand in opposite palm. 6. Rub each thumb clasped in opposite hand. 7. Rub hands until product is dry. Do not use paper towels and once dry, your hands are clean. Ensure you rub your hands for at least 15 seconds, about the time it takes to hum the happy birthday song from beginning to end two times. Pay attention to all surfaces of the hands and fingers, including the tops of hands. This slide provides a visual step-by-step -step of how to clean your hands using soap and water. First, wet hands with warm water. Apply soap. Lather soap and rub hands palm to palm. Rub in between and around fingers. Rub back of each hand with the palm of the other hand. Rub fingers of each hand in opposite palm. Rub each thumb clasped in opposite hand. Rinse thoroughly under running water. Pat hands dry with a paper towel. Turn off the water using the paper towel. Your hands are now clean. Ensure you scrub your hands for at least 15 seconds, about the time it takes to hum the happy birthday song from beginning to end two times. Pay attention to all surfaces of the hands and fingers, including the tops of hands. Paper towels are preferred for drying hands. The following slide highlights a few points to remember with respect to hand hygiene and covering your cough. Use liquid soap and water or hand sanitizer that is 60 to 90 percent alcohol. Perform hand hygiene before putting on PPE like gloves and when taking off PPE. Rub hands actively for at least 15 seconds. Avoid touching your face, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Covering your cough is a way to decrease the spread of respiratory illness. Proper cough and sneeze etiquette, such as coughing and sneezing into a tissue, elbow, or sleeve, followed by cleaning your hands with hand sanitizer or soap and water, can also help to reduce the potential for spreading germs. Now let's talk about personal protective equipment or PPE. For those receiving care, when staff or caregivers are providing care to you, sometimes the type of care may require them to wear PPE. This is to protect them as well as others who they may care for. PPE can include gloves, gowns, medical masks and eye protection such as goggles or a face shield. If you are a visitor or caregiver, you may need PPE to visit or care for the person if you are performing tasks that may result in exposure to blood or body fluids or if the person has a specific illness or condition. It is important that you know how to put on and take off PPE properly to protect you and others. This information will be provided as part of this presentation, but also check with the setting for any specific information you need to know. Staff, people receiving care and visitors are to wear masks to prevent the spread of infections such as COVID-19. Follow the guidance and direction from the setting for what type of mask you need to wear, medical or non-medical, and when. When a mask becomes damp, replace it with a new mask. Everyone needs to be instructed on how to put on a mask safely and remove it. How do you use a mask? First, you want to clean your hands with either hand sanitizer or soap and water for at least 15 seconds. Smooth the wire on the top of the mask firmly along your nose and cheekbones so that the mask doesn't move up on your face. This can also help with eyeglass fogging. Avoid touching the front of the mask when wearing it, as the outside of the mask is considered dirty. 
If the front of the mask is touched, hand hygiene should be performed. Masks can be removed when eating or drinking. How to wear the medical mask. Clean your hands with soap and water or hand sanitizer. Hold the mask by the ear loops and place a loop around each ear. Mold or pinch the stiff edge to the shape of your nose. Pull the bottom of the mask over your mouth and chin. Avoid touching the front of the mask when wearing. In order to remove the medical mask, first clean your hands with soap and water or hand sanitizer. Avoid touching the front of the mask. Only touch the ear loops. Hold both of the ear loops and gently lift and remove the mask. Throw the mask in the trash. Clean your hands with soap and water or hand sanitizer. Gloves, gowns, and eye protection. Gloves are worn to protect your hands from blood or body fluids. Clean hands before and after using gloves. Gloves are task specific and need to be changed between each task, such as bathing, feeding, or toileting, or per performing personal care. Gowns are worn to protect your clothes and expose skin. Eye protection such as goggles, a face shield, or a mask with an attached visor protect your eyes and face from droplets or other fluids. The following slide outlines the steps for putting on and taking off PPE. It is very important that families, caregivers, and visitors know how to use personal protective equipment or PPE, including the proper order in which the equipment is to be put on and removed. If PPE is not put on, worn, or removed correctly, this may increase the risk of potential exposure to COVID-19 or other infections. Hand hygiene is the first step in putting on PPE. Clean your hands for at least 15 seconds. Once hands have been cleaned, put the gown on, followed by the mask, then the eye protection. Put gloves on last, ensuring that the cuffs of the gown are underneath the glove and not on top of them. Put PPE on before entering the bed space or room. Once you are in the room, it is important not to touch your face or adjust your PPE so you don't spread germs to yourself. It is very important to take it off the right way so that you don't contaminate yourself. First, remove your gloves using a glove-to-glove, skin-to-skin technique. This means, for the first glove, grasp near the outside edge, near the wrist, and peeling it away, rolling the glove inside out. Hold the glove in your other gloved hand. Next, slide your fingers under the second glove and peel away. Discard both gloves in a waste container. Next, remove the gown by first undoing the waist ties and then the neckties. Pull the gown forward from the neckties and roll it so that the contaminated outside of the gown is to the inside. Roll off the arms into a bundle and then discard into a waste container or a soiled laundry container if it is reusable. Now, clean your hands for at least 15 seconds. Next, remove eye protection by handling the straps, loops, or back only. Discard into the waste receptacle or an appropriate container for cleaning. Remove the mask by handling the straps or ear loops only and discard into a waste container. Lastly, clean your hands again for at least 15 seconds. In the next section, we will discuss screening. Screening is a way to identify someone who might have an infection and so additional IPAC measures may need to be put in place. Screening can include reading a list of questions, being asked some questions, or having a lab test such as a swab. Patients, residents, or clients may also be screened for other communicable diseases on admission. For example, in long-term care, Residents are screened for tuberculosis. What happens if someone screens positive? 
Depending on the situation, for the patient, resident, or client, they may be moved to a private room and be put on isolation. Staff and visitors may need to wear PPE to go in the room or to provide care. Additional testing may be needed. If a visitor or caregiver screens positive, then they will not be allowed to visit and will have to reschedule until they are well. If they are visiting a patient, resident, or client who is positive, this means they may need to wear PPE during the visit or the visit may need to be rescheduled depending on the situation. Now let's talk a little bit about immunization. One of the best and safest ways to prevent the spread of infection is immunization. It can prevent someone from getting the disease, but also prevent them from spreading it. Many vaccines are available for serious diseases such as COVID-19, the flu, measles, and hepatitis. Some patients, residents, or clients may have lower immunity, such as the elderly or those who are immunocompromised, which means having a weakened immune system, such as those people receiving cancer treatment or with a disease such as HIV. They may not get the full protective effects of a vaccine. This is why it is important for families and caregivers to be immunized so that they do not spread an infection to their sick or vulnerable family member. Our next topic is physical distancing. Physical distancing means keeping two meters or six feet away from others. A good way to think of this distance is the length of your arms stretched out to the sides. This is especially important if you are removing your mask in order to eat, drink, or smoke. In some settings, those receiving care may be cohorted or placed in groups such as together for meals. Now let's talk about some tips for safe visiting. Always follow safe visiting procedures. If you are bringing items into the setting, such as furniture, please check with the setting and follow any policies that they may have. If possible, items should be cleanable and or have instructions from the manufacturer or a label on how to clean it, for example, an electric razor. For furniture, it is helpful if it is wipeable or, in other words, is not made of cloth, but rather vinyl. Do not share items with other patients, residents, or clients. Some personal items are not designed to be shared by more than one person, as they cannot be completely cleaned and disinfected. When you are visiting or caring for a person where there is a sign on their door, there are a few things to know. Do not provide care to or assist other patients, residents, or clients and visitors in adjoining bed spaces or setting. Only provide care to the person that you are visiting. Do not eat or drink in the bed space or room. Do not share items with other patients, residents, clients, visitors, or caregivers. Please speak with staff working in the area for further direction or instruction. The reason for these restrictions is that you do not want to spread the infection to yourself or others. If you or your family member are receiving services at home or your personal residence, here are some helpful IPAC practices. Let the service provider know if provider know if anyone is ill in the home before they visit. Put pets in another room with the door closed. A waste container or garbage is put by the door to dispose of PPE if it is needed to provide care to the person. If you have questions or need more information about what you need to do or what practices are in place to prevent infections, talk to the staff in the care setting. You can also find a lot of information on the websites of your local public health unit, the Government of Ontario, and Public Health Ontario. Your local public health unit has a lot of useful IPAC 
resources on their website. You can find your local public health unit using the link provided. Many IPAC policies and procedures are based on law and or guidance from the Government of Ontario and public health units. For example, COVID-19 visiting policies are consistent across the province. For more information, you can access the Ministry of Health guidance here on their webpage. Public Health Ontario has a number of IPAC resources available on our website to assist you, including additional training and instructional videos. Public Health Ontario would appreciate your thoughts on this presentation. Please visit Public Health Ontario's IPAC Fundamentals Training webpage to access and complete a short survey. For more information about this presentation, please contact communications at oahpp.ca. Thank you and stay safe.